Gordon Shedden, Rory Butcher with all your Knock Hill family connections. We'll go into all that in just a minute. But, but 30 years of touring car racing here at Knock Hill. What would be your first memory of the touring cars coming here? Uh, for me, I mean, the very first time I came here would have been 94, which was obviously spectacular for lots of reasons. Uh, and everyone remembers it for, for Gabrielli Tarquini destroying the, the Alfa Romeo down at McIntyre's with, with, with a little bit of an, an assist, I think, from a certain Tim Harvey yeah. uh, at that time. So I think, yeah, it's one of these iconic moments. And certainly I remember the crowd screaming like, uh, you know, the World Cup final as it all happened. It was so spectacular. Yeah, we have been discussing that with Tim. You did see contact, did you? I think I think a lot of people have seen contact. Uh, you know, the, I know the TV cameras uh, maybe weren't quite as up to date as they are now, but um, yeah, I think Tim Tim would find it quite difficult to to be totally blameless in that one. Good, that's very useful. Uh, Rory, from your point of view, you'd have been what sort of age in '92? Um, probably four years old, five years old, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I probably didn't witness the Tarquini uh, shunt, but. You know, got memories of, I can't remember when um, Colin McRae came and did a guest drive. Did he turn around, Matt Neal, at the hairpin? I think he did, it was quite famous. Um, and then, yeah, so many good times with the Super Touring times. Obviously, when Gordon moved into the S2000 era, and I was at the sidelines cheering him on, I think that shows his age. But I was just starting my racing career back then, and, and then I'd be uh, cheering Gordon on and uh, wishing him well. Um, and then, obviously, you've got the the many years of Matt Neal and Jason Plato battling it out here, um, which has brought an amazing excitement. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, been great to be part of it. But with your family connections, with the ownership of the circuit and so on, uh, between you, who has done the most laps, do you reckon, around Knock Hill? Well, I'm going to say Gordon. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I spend more time here, for sure, but not on the track, you know, more office-based. It's safer that way. But, you know, everyone always says, oh, you must have a big advantage when we come to race at Knock Hill. But genuinely, neither of the two of us do do a load of laps round here so what it does give is an extra spring in our step I'm sure you know the crowd are absolutely incredible and it's great because now we've got a full crowd back you see the flags you see the homemade banners and it does give you that that extra little bit of get up and go and there's probably an extra spring in your step after uh, the result at Croft uh, much needed absolutely uh, it looked a million miles away um, you know two laps into race one when we're trundling back to the pits with a broken car so uh, what a fantastic way to finish uh, you know, put everyone into that summer break on a little bit of a high, but you know, we're under no illusions. Uh, you know, part two of the championship starts now, and we, we've got work to do. And Rory, what are you looking for in part two? Yeah, I think we're looking to, to kind of ramp things up a bit. We really had a consistent start to the year, some technical issues that were out of our control, but you know, we've scored in a lot of the races and scored well, and we've clawed back a little bit of points in the championship in the last couple of rounds, which is, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking to kind of uh, start to ramp things up and, and hopefully uh, get into that top five pretty soon. Well, enjoy the weekend and uh, we love Knock Hill as well. Thanks, thanks, thanks. All the best.